Hey everybody, it's Jason Baja here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And I've had people make me aware of this guy named Jeremy Ether. I've never heard of this kid before. Uh, some people said, hey, why don't you go check out his full body workout? I think you're going to like it. And I actually did. Uh, and normally you guys know, you guys know I am very, very critical of YouTube fitness that I think 80 to 90% of the guys on here are charlatans who give bad advice that you do nothing but drugs to build their physiques and then promote really piss poor training. Uh, I've never heard of Jeremy before. I'm surprised given the size of his channel. Uh, I saw the video and I was actually really surprised that good proper training was actually being promoted by someone with close to a million subscribers that is almost unheard of so i'm gonna give this guy props so let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing work on skill at my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this now i'm not saying i agree with everything that he said uh, or everything in the video but again he pointed out it's science-based and he, again it's full body training and what is it that i tell to you guys 95 percent of you out there will never need anything other than full body training three days a week only people who are going to be very, very serious athletes even need to deviate away from that. For most of you, you will be able to reach 90 plus percent of your lifetime potential that way. And what I mean lifetime potential, I'm talking putting on 20, 25 pounds of solid muscle. I'm talking about getting your bench up to 300, getting your squat up to 400, deadlift five, standing press to 200, right? Being able to do a weighted pull up with 100 pounds of plates right? That, that's what I shoot for. That's what I tell you guys you need to be trying to reach for most of you out there. That's totally obtainable, natural. Uh, and that, that sort of goal can usually be reached with full body three days a week, which is what he's promoting. When we start talking about different forms of concurrent periodization and four-day, five-day, six-day training programs, that's for very advanced, serious lifters. That's for guys who are trying to get their bench up to 400 pounds. That's for guys trying to squat 550, 600 Right, we're talking about serious athletes at that point, but guys who are just trying to reach maximum jacktitude as a natural, full body three days a week is fine. And I really like most of his exercise selection. I'm going to disagree with two of them, uh, but what did he throw in there? Four of his main lifts are lifts that I tell you guys are some of the best lifts for getting you jacked. And when I say jacked, I don't just mean size, I mean size and strength. In other words, being solid, being thick, being strong. Um, and what were they? Bench press, squat, the press. Now, I think he called it a standing barbell press. It's just called the press. That's the name of that exercise, which is an exercise that anyone who's out there promoting, I'm going to tend to give you a shout out for because it, it's been underrated. It's been underutilized, and it is probably one of the greatest exercises of all time. For those who haven't figured out, that's one of my favorite two lifts ever. That and the deadlifts are king. Those, those are my favorite lifts ever. And weighted pull-ups, which you guys know I'm also a really, really big fan of. Uh, and I've put in a lot of work in the last year on my own weighted pull-ups. So the fact that he threw those in, beautiful. The fact that he talked about full range of motion, beautiful. And he showed the studies because, guys, that's the truth. Stopping short of your chest on the bench press, studies show it reduces growth. Not going to parallel on squats, we got plenty of studies showing your quads will be smaller. And you're going to have a higher injury rate. By the way, both of those lifts, stopping short, will actually increase your injury risk, uh, believe it or not. So it's actually the safest way to train, uh, and it's going to put the most muscle mass on you. And for those of you who are saying, well, I just want to be strong, which is what a lot of my followers are, size and strength are correlated. You can't separate them without drugs. You can't fully separate them without using drugs to separate them. That's why you see some bodybuilders who are weak. Um, but I really like that. The only thing he, that I might give a little caveat with the bench press, what did he say? The only exception to not touching your chest might be if you're trying to work on a weak point in your bench. Okay, I can tell he's not a power lifter. That's okay, I am. Uh, Jeremy, little side note there, your followers don't ever need that. And the reason is that is not for raw power lifters. Power lifters who compete in just a singlet and a t-shirt never, ever, ever have sticking points they need to work on. That is purely an equipped lifter mindset, people who use a bench press shirt. Uh, you're going to find most of the best coaches who, I'm talking guys like Paul Carter who have five have hit 500-pound raw benches in comp, right, and who coach a lot of athletes will tell you that that's complete bullshit. That doesn't, there's no such thing for raw lifters. Uh, all your work should be paused. That's the only other thing I would add. He, he was touching the chest, and I can appreciate that. I appreciate that he showed the data on that. Pausing on your chest will actually elicit an even better result. And yes, it's going to require you to use slightly less weight, 
Well, you're going to get an even bigger chest if you start pausing for just a one count on your chest on every rep. Go ahead and pause, let it sink, and then press it from a dead stop. Um, again, that's going to be better. Uh, so the only other caveat I would add there is that the promoted full range of motion bench press. And even pointed out, he started showing the studies on the chest and arms. And if you guys look further at some of those studies, you guys notice there's no tricep work thrown in. Why? A lot of people aren't aware of this, but multiple studies have shown that, that if you add tricep extensions, if your bench press work is sufficient, your triceps don't actually grow from the tricep work. Again, people aren't aware of that, but the research is there. It's been studied, and as much as people might want to do a bunch of tricep extensions, they don't actually really seem to help when we measure the muscle growth. They don't seem to help for people who are already doing a lot of bench volume. And he looks, he's got you benching three or four sets, six to ten reps, and doing the press. Your triceps don't have any work capacity left anyways after those workouts. If he, if he actually has you do the press and the bench for three to four sets every time you're in the gym, your triceps are done. Now people who would say, well, what about the long head? The long head gets worked on the press. And it gets worked on the pull-up if you go all the way down. He actually has the long head covered. He has the long head of the tricep covered already with the other two exercises pretty effectively. So that's already sorted for you. I mean, that's pretty well done. Uh, I do like, again, he talked about the full range of motion on the squats. Pointed out the studies on quads. Beautiful. And people are saying, well, the squat, is it just for quads? No, squat is, is again, a full body exercise. If you go look at, again, the data that's out there, Brad, Dr. Brad, uh, Greg Knuckles, all these guys did some studies, and they found that they could calculate a person's max squat purely with a DEXA scan and how much muscle you had on your body versus relative to your height. They could plug in a formula, and every single one of their people, when they ran through the formula that they studied, their max squat was within 10% of their estimate based on that calculation. So the, the amount that you can squat is directly correlated to the amount of muscle mass on your body. It, it doesn't just work the quads, guys. It works a lot of other muscles. And it makes you stronger overall. It improves neural efficiency, neuromuscular efficiency, which is going to make you stronger. All those other lifts over time, which is going to get you bigger. Uh, I love that he had the press in there. I'm going to be honest, I love the press. Again, exercise that puts a lot of muscle on your upper body and your core and everything else. Weighted pull-ups, same thing. People will say, well, what about the upper chest? The upper chest is covered. He has the press and the weighted pull-up in there. Again, your upper chest development's fine. Even if it's a little lagging from the bench, those other two lifts hit it. They hit it. So, I mean, everything is being thoroughly worked. Some of the other stuff he threw in, um, the, the laying leg curls, not really a fan. Uh, that's the one thing I'd be like, eh, I'm not wild about that. I'm really not. Why not throw another big compound in? Now, he's probably going to have in workout B, is he probably going to have some sort of deadlift or hip hinge? I imagine so. But if you're really wanting to develop hamstrings, you, you need a hip hinge anyway. So you need some sort of hip hinge exercise. So lying leg curls aren't going to hit everything that you want. Um, again, the hamstring is not just tied to the knee joint. All right, you do need movement of the hip joint. So I would say maybe he should have thrown in something like a Romanian deadlift or a good morning. Because again, he talked about the need for eccentric based uh, hamstring work seems to be what helps with injury prevention. Yeah, then, then doing an eccentric based exercise, right? You could have something like good mornings. You could have something like Romanian deadlifts. But I suspect he's going to throw a conventional deadlift in, which if you guys look at a lot of the EMG studies, conventional deadlift actually hits the hamstrings harder as far as peak work goes than most other lifts, but it's going to be concentric based. Um, face pulls, he threw face pulls in, and he talked about, again, notice the grip he used on that, it's what I use, it's what I recommend, that pretty much well-rounded the upper body. I mean, that finishes everything you need for the shoulders, shoulder health. Uh, again, he was actually performing the face pulls correctly. I'm going to give props for that because, again, face, you guys know I'm a fan of face pulls. Uh, only thing I didn't necessarily agree on was a drag curl, and the only reason is that, again, it's a smaller exercise. Uh, I do like that he talked about shoulder extension because, again, this is the silly stuff bodybuilders don't think about. You see all these bodybuilders, they talk about all these really strict curls. But the reality is, what's one of the functions of the bicep? The shoulder extension. It's not just at the elbow, which is why isolation movements are worthless. Isolation movements are stupid. They really are. They're stupid. And I'm glad that the only curl that he threw in there, he just wanted to work the bicep a little bit differently than the pull-up. And the pull-ups for most of you guys are going to 
develop your biceps just fine. But the only curl that he threw her in, even though that might, wouldn't have been my choice, I would have said maybe a cheat curl where you come all the way up so you get shoulder extension. Uh, that would be what I would recommend if you're going to throw a curl in, but he still chose a curl that uses shoulder extension. I'll give props for that. I mean, that's not that not it's really not a bad choice. And we come back over to a curl that throws has shoulder extension. Does what? Has a multi joint component. It's going to improve strength more. That's going to carry over to your pull ups better. So technically, that curl that he's having people do is an accessory for their pull up, which is going to be a main mass builder. So when I look at the way that he set a lot of this up, I like it. Uh, now, granted, he didn't throw in a progression. So it's not a true program because he didn't tell you how to go about progressing the weight. But let's say a person is no longer a total rank novice. He's got you doing six to 10 reps. You could just add reps. And when you get up to his prescribed reps, you could add weight, drop down to the six reps and just build it from there in, a, in an undulating fashion, couldn't you? So, I mean, you could take what he's got as a template and very easily plug in your own programming. Uh, I'll be curious to see what he does with workout B because I really didn't like those those uh, dumbbell leg curls. I think that was really a fluff exercise. It's the only thing in there I didn't like, to be honest. It's the only thing in there I didn't like, I would have replaced it with a bigger movement. But if I were to look at this template and compare this to most of the stuff that you see people recommending out there for training programming, it's dramatically better than most of the workouts you see people putting up on YouTube Fitness. It's dramatically better. It's got at least four of my favorite, actually five with the face pulls, but as far as big movements go, we've got four of my top seven to eight exercises for just getting you big and strong. They're all in there. He discussed full range of motion. His exercise selection was balanced. It was good. Uh, I feel like for, for drug-free lifters, they could run this program more or less the way he has it and figure out their progression rates and we'll see what he does with workout b but i'm assuming it's going to be pretty good based on a um, but this is a good template to work with I, I think a lot of people could get really good results on this probably better results than the majority of what i see people out there running uh, the majority of what i see people out there selling and he put it out for free i can't hate on that i can't hate on that um, overall, uh, I've never heard of this guy before. This is literally the only video of his I've seen. And normally I give fitness YouTubers a really hard time for being dumbasses and con men. He doesn't strike me that way at all. Uh, I think this guy probably, based upon this video, I think he probably knows what he's talking about. So again, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.